Hello everybody and welcome to Wealth Fever. It's Dan, your host. Hey, I know it's been a little time since my last video, but uh, I'm back. And so today, in order to ease back into the process, I'm going to revisit uh, the E6010 electrode with stick welding. Uh, we had started off with that some time ago, doing it in the flat position. So today I thought, well, what the heck, let's try the horizontal position and hopefully get through these uh, all four positions in a little bit of a mini-series. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it. Stick with me. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. I'm about to light up and uh, perform the root pass on this horizontal uh, weld of an E6010 using an E6010 electrode. Now you'll notice uh, that uh, this position of my uh, cruciform that I'm using to weld here is in a true horizontal position. Now, technically speaking, uh, if I were to do like say a T-joint and I were to lay a fillet weld in at a T-joint with one of the members being at 90 degrees and the other one being, uh, I should say one of them being directly vertical and the other one directly horizontal meeting at 90 degrees uh, that would be considered a horizontal weld as well but in order to make this one a little bit more challenging I put it at true horizontal position um, and anyhow if you notice what I'm doing here I am doing a whip and pause uh, motion and I'll get into that a little bit more in just a little bit there's the termination of this part of the weld just because I ran out of welding rod and I'm going to go ahead and light up, and you notice I light up well ahead of the termination of my weld, and I drag the electrode while long arcing a little bit back to uh, the termination, and that's the way I start. The reason for that is because that second or two of dragging back and long arcing actually heats up the electrode to a point that when you arrive at the termination of the weld, you will have good fusion and good penetration and you won't have a lump at your restart so that's a great trick notice here also at the termination of my weld I'm hitting once twice three times four times for good measure five times for good measure may even six times wow I do that so that I can terminate the weld and get uh, weld uh, bead all the way to the very end so that we don't drop off with nothing and here you go there's the uh, root pass you'll notice that it is well penetrated and that both plates top and bottom are fused in this here um, you notice there's a little bit of a problem with the focus I apologize for that this is a brand new camera that I picked up for the welding videos and I'm still getting used to it but hopefully you all will notice that the quality of the videos is much better than what I have done in the past so bear with me on that. Take this little bit of a learning curve. Anyway, uh, now I'm going to show you that I have a second bead set up on the top. And forgive me for this. Again, the newness of the camera. I had actually filmed this, but somehow I lost the footage. And so now all I have to show you is the second weld already placed in there. Uh, never worry, or excuse me, never fear. I'm going to get into uh, welding subsequent passes in just a second here, but uh, again, a little bit of learning curve with the camera. Okay, so now we're going to get into doing just pass after pass after pass, and the benefit of this here is that I'm going to zoom in real tight so that you can actually see how I manipulate the rod. Now, an E6010 rod is a fast freeze rod, and it is a rod that requires to be oscillated. Some people like to do circular motion, some people like to do zigzags, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of techniques out there, but I prefer to do a whip and pause, which is basically where I whip out of the puddle and then I pause, creating a small little um, how should we say, a scallop, if you will, or a little bit of a uh, scale. I think a scale is the best word for it to describe it. Anyway, there's a series of scales that happen, and there's uh, they overlap each other, one on top of the other. And so uh, the pause is what allows the puddle to spread out and form the scale. And the motion of whipping out, the only reason you do that is to get out of the puddle long enough for it to 
long enough for it to actually allow it to partially solidify uh, basically giving it a break and the reason for that is again a E6010 electrode is a deep penetrating electrode and because of that it uh, really needs uh, a little bit of a break uh, otherwise if you just stick stick it in there and keep it in there uh, you're very likely to penetrate a little too far and in some cases blow a hole right through your material depending upon the thickness of it okay the last thing I really want to point out here is that you'll notice that uh, I am keeping my eye on the puddle uh, as I continue along the welds here they are getting faster and faster in other words I'm going across the plate quicker and quicker and the reason for that is because my plate is heating up as I'm welding. Basically, I weld one pass after the other, and it just gets hotter and hotter, which allows me to uh, move faster and faster. So anyhow, uh, you'll also notice one last thing that I want to mention is that I am overlapping one stringer bead over the, over the next, or the previous one. Uh, reason for that is because overlapping helps to solidify the weld and helps to make everything fuse together better creating a more structurally sound weld so much more so than if you were to just stack beads next to each other the act of overlapping ensures that you have good fusion between one bead and the next and so it's definitely a preferred practice when uh, you're building up bead after bead Okay, and here's the finished welds, or the finished beads, stacked one on top of the other, just to give you an idea of what they look like. And here is a better view, a frontal view of it. You can see I have at least five or six layers there. I <laughs> kind of lost count, to tell you the truth. But uh, you also you can see I stopped short of the entire thing because, let's face it, it gets a little tedious after a while. So, But anyway, that's a great shot of it. So now here's the important part of this whole thing about doing something vertically. You can see this is the side of the shot. This is where the beginning of the welds occurred. And look at from here to here. It's almost 90 degrees straight down and across. And that's really what you're trying to achieve more than anything else when you're doing a vertical exercise like this one, is trying to get a nice 90 degree straight line from bottom to top straight across. That way you know you're laying it in flat and you're laying it in uh, smoothly uh, one layer on top of another and you're not sagging or dripping or coming out in every, any one spot. So that's exactly what uh, I would hope to achieve on something like this. Here's another quick angle or view of this. Uh, you notice in here that uh, each layer is stacked on top of the other and each layer has been covered by the subsequent layer so the process is basically as I described before uh, you want to overlap one layer after the other after the other and you notice there's a lot of layers here there's one two three four five maybe six layers uh, here that I can count and yeah it's tedious and yeah it takes time but if you want to do it right uh, that's really what you should uh, try to achieve because you know, you could spread these out. You could probably handle this in, you know, maybe three layers, uh, really wide layers that are just barely touching each other and not actually overlapped. But you're not going to have as sound a weld if your uh, if your stringer beads are uh, next to each other as opposed to overlapping. Overlapping is the key to everything. Overlapping is the key to good fusion uh, between the beads, uh, which basically equates to a stronger weld. So. That's kind of what you're after. Okay, so ends another one. Hey, thanks a lot for joining me on this one. I'll be having a lot more coming soon. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And check out uh, my website, www.weldfever.com, 
for all the latest information on what's going on with our channel. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.